Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This meeting is in compliance with the open public meeting law and has been duly advertised in the newspaper as an official meeting. Roll call. Mrs. Gardella. Present. Mrs. McC Mr. McCarran. Present. Mrs. Barocas. Present. Mrs. Cass. Present. Dr. Osman. Mr. Pa Palmieri. Present. Mrs. Rivera. Present. I need a motion for approval of the agenda with addendums. Motion. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mrs. Gardella. Yes. Mr. McCarran. Yes. Mrs. Barocas. Yes. Mrs. Cass. Yes. Mr. Palmieri. Yes. Mrs. Rivera. Yes. I now turn the meeting over to Mrs. Permilli for her superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Palmieri. So, good evening, everyone. Uh, as we always do for every board meeting, we'll start with our student high school board representative reports this evening. And tonight, I'd like to start with Jose from Liberty. Good evening, Superintendent Pornelli, Board of Education members and guests. I hope everyone's New Year's is off to a great start. I appreciate the opportunity to speak before you again with the updates happening at Liberty. Our winter sports are heating up with many standout performances and key victories. This weekend, our racing programs reminded everyone what a powerhouse Jackson is in the sport. Our boys team won the Buck Classic at Red Bank Regional, while the Jackson girls team dominated the illustrious short conference tournament, earning more points than any other team. In addition to that, the girls were proud to have three athletes earn first place titles, three more earned second place finishes, and yet another three finished third place in their weight class. This upcoming weekend, the team will compete against the top 10 ranked schools to determine who will be named number one in the state. Best of luck, ladies. The competition sure team also had two huge wins after they took home the trophy at their opening competition up in Woodbridge, as well as their most recent one winning Brookdale's Impact Competition. They're hosting a competition this weekend where you can see them perform as part of an expo. Come out and show your support. The girls basketball team is on a hot streak after winning two games last week and added another huge win last night versus Monmouth Regional. The victory was so special because Monmouth is a well-respected team and it was the Lions senior night. Their next game is home this Thursday versus Ocean, but if you can make it in person, JTV will be filming it so you can watch at home. There have also been standard individual performances in sports like when junior Grayson Wolf broke the New Year's Eve top 50 list in track after his win in the 1600. Another athlete earning accolades is Brandon Dean for advancing to the short conference tournament for swim. We are proud of all of our student athletes, but these performances seem particularly noteworthy. There have been a lot of other events going on at Liberty besides our sports team success. Legally Blonde is working hard at rehearsals with the show just a little more than a month away. The art department is busy beautifying the halls as the National Art Honor Society works on an amazing mosaic. National Art Honor Society is also hosting a pizza and paint party tomorrow night at Liberty. Liberty also hosted the eighth graders recently to give them a preview of what it's like at the high school. Then, the parents were welcomed at night for an orientation of their own. It was great to have new faces in the halls, excited for the future. We were also happy to have the New Year's technical field trip that visited the Universal Technical Institute. Once there, the students receive a tour and learn about options available to them that are outside the traditional college path. We are thrilled to help everyone find their place. Speaking of finding their place, 13 students have been selected to be interviewed for Boys and Girls State. This is a prestigious honor and we know they will represent Liberty well. Many clubs are busy raising money for scholarships and events. The class of 2025 is having a fundraiser at Panera on January 31st to close out the month. Additionally, they and the class of 2026 are holding a snap rate fundraiser, so please feel free to contribute however you can. The dance team just held a Bubacus fundraiser and the course is selling Krispy Kreme donuts. But Liberty is also very excited to give back. 
Utah GA worked hard on a district-wide community code drive. It was incredibly successful, and many families are grateful for how the town came together to provide them with warm coats for the winter. Over 1,500 coats were distributed at Liberty this past Saturday. The Lions Closet was also open and sold over 1,000 items for $1 each. The Lions Closet is looking to have more events in the future where families can come and shop for the many wonderful items they have to offer. Information on these dates will be coming soon. As you can see, Liberty is starting 2023 off with a lot of spirit and trying to make it the best year yet. We appreciate all of the support from the board and community. Without you, our experience wouldn't be what it is, and we are so grateful to all of you for that. Have a good time. Thank you, Jose, for the very informative report. Lots of things happening there at Liberty. Uh, we'd, I'd now like to call Keith from Memorial to give an update. Good evening, Mrs. Pormilli, members of the Central Administration staff and board members. Thank you for having me back to address you all once again regarding this month at Jackson Memorial High School. I'm thrilled to report some exciting things happening around our school. To start off, I would like to mention how exciting it is that our school's organizations have been able to resume their trips and activities after the challenges posed by the, pan the pandemic in the previous years. The Jackson Academy of Business students, for example, recently visited Rutgers University had the opportunity to explore the world of business and entrepreneurship. While some of our science groups have, have had the opportunity to explore several areas like Caddis Island, Island Beach State Park, and the Manasquan Reservoir, and learn about the natural resources and the environment. Additionally, our DECA organization competed in district competitions held at Keene University, and the state qualifiers are excited to attend the state competition in Atlantic City at the end of February. Soon, Model Congress will be headed back to Trenton to lobby for passage of their bills. Academics and extracurricular activities continue to thrive at Jackson Memorial. Recently, the Jackson Memorial Drama Club got a visit from Broadway superstar Gavin Lee this past Sunday. The actor has been in countless Broadway shows, including Les Mis, Beauty and the Beast, Mary Poppins, and most recently, SpongeBob SquarePants, and came to Jackson Memorial to teach a master class for our upcoming musical. He went over character, de character development, acting, and choreography for the show. He even did a Q&A at the end where he answered questions about the hard work it takes to get to Broadway and how to put your best foot forward. In addition to this, our winter sports teams are doing quite well so far, as the girls basketball team is moving along with an impressive record, and the girls wrestling team starting off ranked number one in the state and continuing to maintain that position. I'm also proud to mention that me and the boys were able to pull through this winter break with our basketball team winning the annual WOBM Christmas Classic Tournament for the first time since 2011. These achievements not only reflect the hard work and dedication of our student athletes, but also showcase the excellence of our, our coaches and sports programs. As we near the end of semester one, it is hard to believe that senior year is flying by so quickly. Next semester promises to be action packed and filled with exciting school events. For example, we are looking forward to the Battle of the Classes, an event that brings the whole school together and fosters school spirit and camaraderie in accordance with some friendly competition and rivalry between classes. In addition to this, preceding that event will be our Spirit Week, which is always a fun one that I'm sure many students are looking forward to. Additionally, we are also excited to participate in the Mr. JMHS event soon after, which is an, an entertaining spectacle for the students to showcase their talents and abilities in a fun and lighthearted setting. I want to also take a moment to recognize the benefits of our common lunch period once again. This has been a great asset for our students as it allows, more time, uh, allows for more time to prepare for concerts for band, meet with guidance counselors, work on common apps, and prepare for AP exams. With all that said and done, I would like to finish off by once again thanking Mrs. Pormilli and the Board of Education for your continued support and for giving me the opportunity to speak here tonight. I look forward to addressing you all next month with some more exciting news regarding the events here at Jackson Memorial. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. And I'm really um, pleased to hear of all the opportunities during common lunch and that the students are using them, and making some wise choices during common lunch time. So thank you for that. So each 
year around this time is the time that I share with the board. I'm actually going to backtrack for a minute. One of the things that when Keith was speaking and Jose was speaking, I realized that um, board members, you may not realize it, but they are displaying some of those things up on the board that our high school students are explaining. We had um, some things happening um, throughout the, the master experiences they were speaking about with the art academies, um, and that was all being on display up on uh, behind us. So I just wanted to make sure I pointed that out. And also what you also probably don't have an opportunity to see is um, while the audience is waiting for us and the community is waiting for us, um, Ms. Irwin always prepares um, some slides of some of the happenings that have been happening in the district. So I uh, just wanted to point that out to you. So maybe tonight you can go back and watch the recording or the, uh, the YouTube video and see some of those things. Um, but I wanted to make sure you, you knew that was happening. So now moving forward, this is the time of the year where I do share with the board and the community the school budget process. We're getting ready to begin the process for the 23-24 school year. So I am going to go to the podium. It just makes it easier for me to see the slides that will be presented uh, behind you. And I'll just uh, review the budget planning process with everyone. So like I said, this is the start of the budget process for the 23-24 school year. I uh, just want to provide everybody a reminder of the background of our state aid cuts that the Jackson School District has been experiencing over um, several years there. You'll see the impact of what is called the S2 cuts to Jackson School District. We have experienced tremendous amounts, millions and millions of dollars of a cut. Um, over the last um, five years. We're entering into the last two years of this proposal that has um, cut and slashed our budget over the last five years. This upcoming school year, we are in, um, slotted to lose $2.5 million in state aid. And then the final year of those cuts will be uh, um, $806,000 for the following year after that. Once this is all done, the district will be looking at an overall $19.3 million lost over the seven years. As you can imagine, um, a huge impact on our district. Um, so the budget process has to take that all into account, obviously. Um, and over the, the several years, we have cut uh, tremendously in areas that would have the least impact on our students. You know, our goal is always to have the least impact on students. You'll see here that, as a reminder to the board and the community, uh, the max increase that we can have for um, tax, the tax levy is 2%. You'll see what it was um, last year. But to put it in perspective, before we even begin our budget planning, we are already $2.5 million behind. Before we even consider all of the other factors that increase our, budgets, our budget over the year, um, some of that is our contractual responsibilities for the increment increases of all of our employees in the district. Uh, the rising costs, we all know that what we've been experiencing in the economy, all of the prices of everything has gone up tremendously. Um, insurance continues to go up and never goes down. And then we have tuition and transportation uh, increases that all have to be taken into consideration as we move forward. This year, uh, for the budget process, the 23-24 school year, I am referring to it as the perfect storm. We're at that place. You can only be cut millions and millions of dollars for so long before you have a tremendous impact. Um, and it compounds over time. Um, you're losing all those millions of dollars every year from a budget. We're at that place where we've hit the perfect storm scenario. Not only do we have, looking at a $2.5 million cut, but we have a tremendous increase in change in our ELL population. You can see there are some numbers listed on the slide. So a, a huge increase in that um, obviously has an impact on our um, how we educate students with extra supports. That increases our budget, as well as um, increases in our non-public transportation. So that also increases our budget um, significantly. Not only that, but as I said, increases to the cost of living. We all see it in our homes. Well, we have 10 schools here, two transportation buildings, and an administrative building that we need to operate gas, electricity, water, all of those things. We have food that we purchase for students at lunch. All of those things have increased tremendously. 
Um, and then, as I had mentioned earlier, so we are starting out in a difficult place for sure as we enter into the 23-24 budget planning season. One of the things um, I often hear from the community, and I am appealing to our community to help us, uh, what can we do to help? Well, we've tried the S-2 letters to the State Department of Education, the governor. Um, we do that every year, and we have not seen any change in those S-2 um, projected cuts in state aid. But what we have also worked on, and I have mentioned multiple times here at public meetings, is we had been working with some legislation, uh, legislators rather, on a draft bill. It's called A4461. It is a pilot um, bill for um, three years of forming a consortium for transportation for all of our non-public schools within the district that um, qualify for transportation or aid in lieu. It also allows for um, the consortium to operate and provide the required transportation and or provide the aid in lieu payment to those who qualify for that. But it, uh, the benefit to the district, not only is it we're able to better provide transportation to our non-public families, but we're also better funded from the state for the unique situation that Jackson is in. That bill asks for the state to also fund us differently for those transportation needs. So that would help tremendously offset that large increase of millions of dollars towards our budget. Um, obviously, we're committed to be providing transportation, and we want to provide that transportation to our non-public families, but it has a significant impact. We also need to look at how can the state help us in this unique situation. So that bill really does all of that. It has been introduced. Um, we have had worked on it for a while. Um, it was introduced by Assemblyman um, Sawicki recently. It has some motion to move forward. It's been supported by Assemblyman uh, Thompson. Uh, so we're, you know, hopeful that it will move forward. We have recently here at the board level um, approved a resolution at the January meeting in support of this. And um, I had also written a letter in support of the bill and asked for our neighboring districts who um, also see increases to sign that letter with us. And we sent all of that to um, our state legislatures, legislators, our um, governor, and our Department of Education and our state. Uh, Board of Education. So I'm asking our community to do the same. Um, you will see here some of the the things that you can do by advocating um, our, you know, the legislators asking them to ensure that the bill comes up for vote and supporting it um, and explaining why we need this relief. Ms. Irwin has put together some wonderful slides that will be posted on our district website right after this meeting for the community to look at and get resources on how and who to send your support emails and letters to. So I do ask that you help us. We have been talking to our PTNs. We've been talking to um, everybody who we possibly could get support from. This could bring some great relief and also still provide the transportation that we want to be able to provide. So with that, back to the budget process, the budget timeline and public input. We provide multiple opportunities for the public to provide input and ask questions. Uh, we will be um, obviously putting a calendar together that will be posted on our district website. The public hearing will be held on the budget that we are asking the board to approve on April 26th. So a little bit of the timeline at the next board meeting, the February board meeting, we will present our, um, our budgets for certain departments publicly to the board and to the community. In March, we will uh, present a tentative budget. It will be introduced at the board meeting. And like I said, in April, we will hold the um, Board of Ed meeting that will hold the public hearing for the proposed budget. All of that is available for public comment um, at those meetings. The information is always all information that's presented here and all information about our timeline for the creation of the budget is always presented. Um, on our board um, website. It's posted there and all of our tentative documents and all of that on our final documents will be posted on the website as well. So all information is transparent. We present at the February, the March, and the April meeting and everything gets posted to our website. That's the process we'll follow in the next few months to get to um, a budget for the 23-24 school year. 
I'll return to my seat and then see if there's any questions. Are there any questions about the budget process from the board? Okay. Well, I'm going to move on with my superintendent's report then. Just some district happenings. Again, there were some things that were presented on the slides behind us uh, this evening. I did want to mention that our SEAC, our Special Education Advisory Committee, is going to be holding a meeting on February 9th at Liberty High School in the library. The presenter is the Assistant Director of Disabilities, uh, Disability Services to the Ocean County College. Um, the name of the workshop is Students with Disability Transitioning to Ocean County College. It is open to any parent, not just special education parents. I encourage you to attend. These are really informative if you think you have a student who's interested in going to Ocean County College. It can provide you a lot of great information. I also wanted to just mention that um, Get School is having a parent uh, keynote speaker presentation on January 24th from 6 to 7.30. The information again is going out to families. It is um, called Conscious Parenting by the Kids Organization. They are also working with parents earlier, I mean with students earlier during that day, but the parent uh, workshop is a great opportunity for parents um, to learn some stress relieving um, opportunities and strategies um, in parenting and working with your, your children and getting some extra tips on how to build strong relationships with your children. So it should be a great workshop. Um, I encourage everyone to attend. Just a reminder that our preschool 23-24 lottery applications kick off tomorrow. Please visit the district website if you go to um, the tab that says departments and programs, you'll find the preschool page there and everything, all the information is listed there for you. Again, I um, encourage you to fill out that lottery. Free preschool is wonderful. Um, we're so excited to expand that program. Um, as you heard from some of our, our two high school reps tonight, there have been a number of master experiences for students through our high school academies. Uh, as I said, you, had seen, you may have seen some of those pictures up on the slides this evening. These are some of the excellent experiences that students get from being part of our academies here at both of our high schools. Um, so I want to also put a plug in for our academy applications for the 23-24 school year are now open and up on the, the high school web pages. Um, go to the high school web page and go under parents and students and you will find the academy page and the applications are posted there and you'll find out more information. There's videos there about what the academies have to offer so I encourage you, please, um, if you're interested, even if you're not sure, still fill it out. It's better to have the option. And if you missed the welcome to high school presentations last week for the grade 8 parents, they were phenomenal and thank you to all of um, our staff who put those together and worked so hard on them, Mr. Palumbo. I know it was an exciting opportunity, and the parents were thrilled to have that information. Ms. LaCitra, thank you as well. Um, if you missed those, th that information is also posted and will be posted on our website. I encourage any parent who missed it, go watch those presentations and learn about all the wonderful opportunities in our high schools that the students have. So finally, I just wanted to mention to our board that we have launched officially this week our first pilot for the MyStop transportation app. <laughs> We've launched it at Johnson and Rosenauer. We're starting small, seeing how the app worked. We're asking those parents to give us some feedback. Um, just as a reminder, that's the app that will allow parents to be able to see when their children swipe on and off the bus. It will also um, provide parents an anticipated arrival time of the bus to the bus stop. And it will also push notifications to your phone for any late bus um, information that is going out. So we're excited to finally get to that pilot. We'll monitor it and if all goes well, within a month or within a month, we'll hopefully we'll be rolling it out to, to the other schools. So finally, I'm going to again just put the plug back in there. I um, encourage our community to go to our district website, learn about how you can help us advocate for this bill, and hopefully we can get some, um, some budget relief to be able to get to a better place um, in our budget. So with that, I turn it back to you, Mr. Palmieri. Thank you, Mrs. Pernelli, for your superintendent's report. So we will have some standing committees. Uh, these committees were just assigned 
and we will be meeting shortly. I'm just going to go over some of our standing committees, uh, their chairperson, and when they will be meeting. We will have a buildings and grounds committee. The chairperson will be Ms. Rivera. That meeting is scheduled to meet for the first time January 30th. Budget and finance, the chairperson is myself, and that date will be determined, but it will be in February. Transportation, the chairperson is Ms. Baracus, and that meeting will be uh, held February 1st. We will have a curriculum and instruction special education committee. The chairperson will be Dr. Osmond. That meeting will meet January 26th. We will also have several ad hoc committees that will not meet regularly, but they will meet as needed. When those committees meet, uh, at the next board meeting, you will be updated on uh, that meeting and what was discussed. Uh, we will have a policy uh, ad hoc committee chaired by Mrs. Cass, a scholarship chaired by Mrs. Cass, a state and county school board representative uh, committee chaired by Ms. Rivera, and a negotiations uh, committee chaired by myself, and that committee will meet January 23rd to prepare for negotiations. Uh, before I move forward, uh, does anyone, uh, any board member have any updates for uh, any of these committees? Okay. Ms. Barakas has an update for us on buildings and grounds. Good evening, everyone. So the updates for the buildings and grounds is Getz Middle School, there was a fire alarm replacement also at Getz Middle School, the gym floor was repaired, resurfaced with polyurethane application. At the Holman School, the stage was repaired and resurfaced with a polyurethane application. The Holman trailer, new vinyl siding was placed. Rosenauer trailer, also new vi vinyl siding. In the Liberty Main and Auxiliary gyms, the gym was resurfaced with the polyurethane application. And then as far as maintenance projects, completed projects in Crawford, the HVAC actuator was repaired. Memorial Liberty, the concession stands and remote outlets were installed. In Liberty, the light poles, exterior parking lots had new light fixtures installed. And, jo and in Johnson, the front entrance exterior recessed lighting was replaced. Well, that's good because we want people to see. <laughs> that's it. Thank you, Ms. Barakas. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone else? Um, I just wanted to second uh, Ms. Permilli's plug about the uh, SEAC virtual workshop on February 9th at Liberty from 6 to 7. Um, it is, again, for students with disabilities looking to attend Ocean County College. And I encourage all parents who are looking to send their ch children to Ocean County College to attend. Thank you, Ms. Cardella. Uh, any other board member would like to update the public? All right. I need a motion for approval of policy first reading. Motion. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mrs. Gardella? Yes. Mr. McCarran? Yes. Mrs. Barocas? Yes. Mrs. Cass? Yes. Mrs. Rivera? Yes. Mr. Palmieri? Yes. I need a motion. For approval of the minutes, the closed session meeting December 21st, 2022, and the official board meeting December 21st, 2022 business meeting. Motion. Second. New board members, please abstain from uh, this motion. Discussion. Roll call. Mrs. Gardella. Abstain. Mr. McCarran? I abstain. Mrs. Barocas? Yes. Mrs. Cass? Yes. Mrs. Rivera? Yes. And Mr. Palmieri? Yes. I need a motion for approval of the bill list. Motion. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Gardella? Yes. Mr. McCarran? Yes. Mrs. Barocas? Yes. Mrs. Cass? Yes. Mrs. Rivera? Yes. And Mr. Palmieri? Yes. I need a motion for approval of the treasurer's 
and Board's Secretary's report. Motion. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mrs. Gardella? Yes. Mr. McCarran? Yes. Mrs. Barocas? Yes. Mrs. Cass? Yes. Mrs. Rivera? Yes. And Mr. Palmieri? Yes. I need a motion to open the public forum on agenda items only. We will hold another public forum during this meeting for other questions. This public forum will be for questions on the agenda only. Motion. Second. Please sign in and state your name and whether you, you are a Jackson resident. Each person is allowed a maximum of five minutes to speak. No person may speak more than once on the topic until others have been heard. Okay. Seeing no one come forward, I need a motion to close public forum. Motion. All in favor? Second. Oh. second. All in favor? Aye. I need a motion to move official meeting schedule. Motion. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mrs. Gardella? Yes. Mr. McCarran? Yes. Mrs. Baracus? Yes. Mrs. Cass? Yes. Mr. Uh, Mrs. Rivera? Yes. And Mr. Palmieri? Yes. I need a motion to move finance. Motion. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mrs. Gardella? Yes. Mr. McCarran? Yes. Mrs. Barocas? Yes. Mrs. Cass? Yes. Mrs. Rivera? Yes. And Mr. Palmieri. Yes. I need a motion to move facilities. Motion. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mrs. Gardella? Yes. Mr. McCarran? Yes. Mrs. Barocas? Yes. Mrs. Oh. Cass? Yes. Mrs. Rivera? Yes. And Mrs. Mr. Palmieri? Yes. I need a motion to move programs. Motion. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mrs. Gardella? Yes. Mr. McCarran? Yes. Mrs. Barocas? Yes. Mrs. Cass? Yes. Mrs. Rivera? Yes. And Mr. Palmieri? Yes. I need a motion to move students. Motion. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mrs. Gardella? Yes. Mr. McCarran? Yes. Mrs. Barocas? Yes. Mrs. Katz? Yes. Mrs. Rivera? Yes. And Mr. Palmieri? Yes. I need a motion to move personnel. Motion. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mrs. Gardella? Yes. Mr. McCarran? Yes. Mrs. Barocas? Yes. Mrs. Katz? Yes. Mrs. Rivera? Yes. And Mr. Palmieri? Yes. I need a motion to open public forum on any topic pertaining to the Board of Education. Motion. Second. Yes. Please sign in and state your name and whether or not you are a Jackson resident. Each person is allowed a maximum of five minutes to speak. No person may speak more than once on the topic until all others have been heard. You already signed in? Yeah. Um, just tell me your name. Nahama Goldstein. Excuse me? Nahama Goldstein. Okay. All right. I have a timer here that will keep you on the five minutes. When it goes to yellow, you have one minute to go. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Um, my name is Nahama Goldstein. Um, I send my children to private school, and I wanted to thank the board um, for working very hard on trying to get us transportation. I do appreciate it. My daughter did get transportation this year, and even though the rest of my children did not, we were told early enough 
that we were able to arrange transportation. So I do thank you for that courtesy that you have done for us. Um, I would like to know, being new to the Jackson Transportation, is how to um, find out anything about the transportation issues, um, how to do anything about it. We are on bus 954, which I think should be put out of service. Um, the bus has broken down numerous times. Um, even after it's repaired and comes back, it smells terribly. I don't know how the bus driver even or the children are able to ride on it for over an hour ride. Um, besides for the fact that it's, you know, needs to be replaced, it has broken down with the children on the bus. Um, this, we were not notified. I mean, I don't know how to get in touch with anybody, but um, the kids broke down five minutes from my house. We were not told. Um, we were all waiting, waiting. We have a bus chat. It came to the first stop, never showed up to the second one. We did not know what was going on. Um, the children had to stay on the bus for a half hour until a new bus came to take the children on the rest of the route, which, you know, I would have gladly driven to the bus stop and picked up my child. Um, and this is not the only time. It's, it's happened a few times already. So I just would like to know if there's any way that we could be notified if such a thing happens. I know that you're trying to make this my stop alert, which I think that would, you know, help the help out. Uh, but I wonder what to do, you know, until then. And um, if we have any issues with transportation, I just wondered, like, who we're supposed to talk to. I did try calling the number um, on the paper with the transportation, um, 8334164, which I think I either don't get a response, n nobody answers, or I'm told to email. I'm still waiting for responses to my emails. Um, so I just would like to know what to do. Thank you. I'm sorry, could you repeat your name one more time for me? Yes. Nahama Goldstein. Okay, and uh, who is your bus provider? Jackson. It's a Jackson school it's bus? It's a Jackson school bus, yes. Okay. Um, bus number 954? Yes. Okay. Um, Ms. Pamili, if you wanted to. Thank you. So, first of all, um, I'm sorry if you're, you're reaching out and you're not getting response, yeah. that's not okay. Um, so yes, you should be calling that number. Um, I'm surprised that it's a Jackson bus, we will look into that, but um, if you're not reaching anybody and you're not getting anywhere, I would ask you to call um, Ms. Richardson who oversees transportation and she will be able to follow up with you. She will follow up with you after tonight's meeting on what has been happening. Um, that's the, the next level to reach out to. Um, so we'll start there and um, get to, to some solutions. That doesn't sound like that's some, a way that we would normally operate, for sure. Um, so we'll follow up with you after the meeting. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I also wrote my name down before. <laughs> uh, my name is Robin Friedman. I am a Jackson resident. I have one student graduated from school, which um, Ms. Godell, you probably know Aaron. <laughs> um, and my other son is still a junior in school. I apologize, I do have notes because I wanted to make sure I got out everything. I'm sure it's been brought to the board's attention that there's the locking of the bathrooms that have taken place in the high schools. Uh, apparently the middle school, I'm a little disappointed there aren't more parents here who uh, were telling me some of their stories that their students were going through. Uh, doing my research, there is a national trend of this. My concern is not only for the health of having to hold it in, trying to find an open bathroom. Uh, the students are going to the nurse's office to use the bathroom. You're now utilizing those services that are needed for other students. You're also being exposed to sickness that you don't need to be exposed to. And everyone's all worried about COVID, so I'm surprised that that's not a a number one issue. The other thing is apparently there's a, supposed to be a schedule for these open bathrooms. When a teacher is out who has a key who is supposed to open the bathroom, 
uh, the substitute teacher has no idea what is going on or that they are supposed to open those bathrooms. So maybe a little communication um, would be better and easier. The other concern is uh, even going on New Jersey's Board of Education website, their main concern was that all bathrooms have uh, feminine hygiene products, whether it's male's bathroom or girl's bathroom. Even bringing that into it, if somebody can't get into the appropriate bathroom because it isn't open, then they're going to be denied that. Um, not sure if you guys knew that that was a new policy that just went into effect. The other concern with locked bathrooms, go off a bid, something should happen, like in other areas. Concern for, I hate to even say the word, but shootings is all over the news. There were seven to eight children in Parkland shooting that might have been able to be saved if the bathrooms were not locked. Okay, those locked bathrooms prevented children from surviving. Um, that's a number one <laughs> concern. I don't understand why the bathrooms are locked. If there's a vaping issue or a destruction issue or a, the kids are having sex, I don't know what's going on this day and age, but why are we not punishing the students that need to be punished that are causing this problem? instead of punishing the good students. Everyone has common lunch. I don't need my kid coming home telling me that when he goes to the bathroom, it's a hot box. I don't know if you guys are familiar with what a hot box is, but if you sit in the car and close all the windows and doors and you smoke pot, that becomes a hot box. I don't need my kid getting high during lunch because he just had to go to the bathroom. That's not just my student. I know there's other students that have that issue too. Let alone, if I have to go to the bathroom and I'm a good kid, I don't do anything, I'm, I could care less what you're doing. I need to go to the bathroom. I go in, two seconds after I leave, a teacher comes in and busts the kids. Who do you think those kids are gonna go after? Now you're encouraging bullying. You're making it easier for those children to be bullied. That's not fair to them either. Um, I just wanna double check my notes, I know I'm I know there were numerous reports in different articles. Again, I found that, that this is a national trend. I'm very disappointed that Jackson Schools adopted this to lock the bathrooms, let alone middle school, let alone high school. We're supposed to be treating these kids like adults, and locking bathrooms isn't very adult-like behavior. Now you're stressing teachers and taking time away from other duties that they have to go open doors and unlock doors and open doors and unlock doors. That's taking time away. It doesn't seem very effective for learning. Having to find a bathroom that's way across the room, or not, sorry, across the building. You guys know this room. If you're in one end and you can't, there's no open bathrooms and you gotta run to the other end of the hall, how long is that taking you? Because you can't run through the corridors. You gotta find an open bathroom that has something. How long is that taking you now? Now the students aren't learning. The teacher isn't getting to do their job because the kids aren't learning. I have some more information I could talk to you guys after if you want. I don't want to take up too much time. I just wanted to point that out. The safety concerns, let alone the health, that's my most important concern. I don't want to have to get a phone call that God forbid something happened in school and my kid was killed because the bathroom was locked or they, he got jumped because he went into the, the open bathroom that the kids were vaping, getting away with murder, and my kid who just had a pee is having a problem. So, thank you. Uh, good evening. I signed in on the paperwork over there. Just figured I'd come here. I have notes, but cliff notes. Uh, my name is Chris Pollack. Um, I am a Jackson resident. Um, so my family and I are concerned about what's being served or offered to students for purchase in the elementary school lunchrooms. Um, I only took notice if something was awry when my student's balance was low within the first two weeks of school. Uh, upon investigation, talking to my child and other kids in, his, in, their, in their grade, um, we find that cookies, ice cream, and other snacks are available for purchase on a daily basis. Um, I have an issue with five, six, seven, year, eight year olds, five, six, seven, eight year olds um, being able that they can do this and, and they will do this every day of the week, uh, even days that they have parties. Um, and parents like myself just are not a, aware of this, could, could not be aware of this. Um, so kids at this age are trying to learn how to be independent and how to make good decisions. But when they walk into their school's lunchroom and they see all these snacks, the snacks are loaded. They're, they're all over there. My, my son can recite the entire snack menu to me. Uh, that's, I think that's an issue. 
Um, it's hard for them to make these good decisions because they see available for purchase or there in the lunchroom every day of the week. They think that's okay. Um, I've learned from multiple staff that kids will, at snack time, um, there's a certain time snack, snacks open, they will throw their lunch away and go buy snacks. Um, so, I mean, I would do the same. Um, this is a lesson learned because snacks were available the first moment lunch was available. As soon as lunch started, uh, snacks were available for purchase. So kids are going to buy, be kids, they're going to buy um, ice cream and cookies for their nutritional lunch as opposed to the, what they should be purchasing. Um, so because of that, then they put the snack time in effect. Uh, so snack time is now a certain time and kids will just buy lunch so that they have met the requirement and then they'll go buy their ice cream and cookies. Um, so it just kind of it negates this healthy lunch that we're trying to, to put forward for our children. Um, some solutions I came up with were to limit snacks to maybe once a week as opposed to every day. Um, let parents know that there could be a list to put their child on so they can't make these purchases. Um, it's, just, uh, it's just difficult that my, my kid will come home and not be hungry for dinner because they had cookies and ice cream for lunch. And I can tell them every day, don't do this, don't do this, but you know, if, the, if it's available, they will. Um, or, or show on the receipt uh, for purchase in the snack room that what snacks were purchased, so at least then I can follow up and say, why are you purchasing X or Y every day at the lunch? Um, that, that's all. Thank you very much for your time. Hello. Lisa Crate, uh, Jackson Education Association President. I just wanted to take a moment to recognize uh, the fact that we did have our coat drive from the beginning of January until last Friday, and then we had our coat, our community coat distribution here at Liberty on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 12. And before I tell you about the success of that, I just want to thank peop uh, two people. We had um, Scott Brooks, who was there for security. He was a great help. And then Dee Anthony was the custodian that was on staff that day, and she was fabulous as well. So I just wanted to thank them first. Uh, but now I want to tell you a little bit about the coat drive. So first I want to um, mention that we were able to collect in a two-week period somewhere around 2,000 coats. And that, they all came from our uh, school community, our parents, and they also came from the Jackson community. People came who do not have students in our schools who were willing to donate coats throughout that two-week period, and that brought us up to around 2,000 coats. And it was coats of every size. We had adults, we had children's coats, we had infants' coats, anything that anyone could possibly need for our coat, collection, uh, for our coat distribution. So um, after we collected all the coats, we had uh, staff members and some students sorting. So a shout out especially to um, Heather Callahan and her Builders Club at Getz. They spent a lot of time sorting coats. And I know on Friday at Liberty, uh, we had some people from the guidance department and some other staff members also sorting coats as coming in. So I thank those members as well. On Saturday, we were fortunate enough to have 250 families come out, or people and their family, come out to Liberty to come shopping. And they were able to take as many coats as they needed for their families. And so we cleared out probably close to 1,500 coats on Saturday. And during that time, not only were we giving our coats away, but the Liberty Lions Closet was also open. And those, uh, that shop is very similar to the shop that we have at uh, McAuliffe, the vintage shop. And all of the items in that shop are a dollar a piece. And it's everything from shoes to pants to uh, socks to shirts to suits. There are full suits there. And the community members who came to get coats also had the opportunity to shop in the Lions Closet. And we sold over a thousand pieces of clothing that day as well. So I just want to thank um, Allison and, and also everyone here and our administrators and, and Board of Education for allowing us to use Liberty and to use our schools as collection points. And I want to thank our members for working so hard to gather those coats, help us sort, and then come in on Saturday. We had members on Saturday come in to work so that we could make sure that the, the school was open and that the community could come out throughout those three hours we were there. And, um, and I just want to you know, really shout out to the Jackson community and to remind everyone that 
This union, our Jackson Education Association, one of our main goals is to be here for the community and for our students, and we were happy to do that this weekend. So thank you again, and we look forward to our next event that we get to work together. Thanks. Seeing no one come forward, I need a motion to close. You want me to turn it over to you? I was going to close public forum. No. Seeing no one come forward, I need a motion to close public forum. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. I would like to just take a minute and actually turn it over briefly to Mrs. Permilli so she has the opportunity to uh, respond to any of the comments that were brought forward this evening. Mrs. Permilli, would you be so kind? Yes, thank you. So I believe I addressed the, the first parent. Um, in regards to um, our bathroom situation, I think you presented um, the fact that we, we do have some challenges um, in our bathrooms, in our high schools. Our school administrators are working hard. Our teachers are working hard to monitor those things. Um, it is a continued challenge. I you know, will be honest about that. Um, sometimes it's not so easy to identify um, students who are making some poor choices in those bathrooms um, and sometimes we don't have the coverage um, you know to put a monitor out there so we continually try to teach and educate our students and build the climate and culture of this is your building please don't destroy it and also for health reasons um, please don't vape and, and do such things we continue to move forward with that um, you know, I will ask you to continue to, um, if you haven't already, reached out to a building administration to express your concerns. Um, I think it's important that they hear from you what you, you've shared with us this evening. Um, we, we continue to work on it. I, I, we don't have a solution. <laughs> There's no perfect solution. Um, but we continue to try to open as many bathrooms as possible and hope that we um, make a difference with some of the educational pieces that we're trying to put into place. You know, most recently in meeting with the student council, I challenged the students to help us solve the problem as well. Um, so we try to open as many as bathrooms as possible. Um, there is the requirement that we have them open in each wing of our schools. So that should be happening. Um, they shouldn't have to go from one wing to another to find an open bathroom. Um, but again, if that's happening, please express that to the building administrator so they can look into it. It's their building. They make those schedules. Um, and we'll continue to work on this um, challenge together, quite frankly. Um, in regards to lunches and snacks, um, we'll look into that again. Um, oh, there you are. <laughs> we'll and, you know, um, encourage you to reach out to our food service um, to express your concerns so that they can look into that. And again, the building administration for, for that building as well where you're experiencing it. But I did take some notes and we'll do some um, looking into those situations as well. So thank you for the comment tonight. That's it, Mr. Primary. Thank you, Mrs. Primary. Uh, I would uh, like to briefly turn this over to our board attorney, Mr. Zinnemer. Mm -hmm. So I would ask that one of the board members move the following resolution. Resolved that the board affirms the administration's determination that case number 238398CMS112-2022 was not a substantiated case of HIV and be it further resolved that the parent shall be notified of the board's decision and the right of appeal. Motion. Discussion? Roll call. Mrs. Gardella? Yes. Mr. McCarran? Yes. Mrs. Brokus? Yes. Mrs. Cass? Yes. Mrs. Rivera? Yes. And Mr. Palmieri? I abstain. I'd like to open it up for board comments starting uh, on my left with Mr. McCarran. Just wanted to say it was a great job by the JEA with the uh, code drive. I did notice that um, they did distribute a, a large amount of codes and did a great job with that. There was a lot of uh, positive comments on social media in regards to that. I uh, also wanted to uh, say I have been able to go to some of the basketball games. I uh, saw Keith playing uh, firsthand. He's very talented. He left out that uh, they did win the basketball game on uh, 
MLK Day for the round ball tournament, and Keith was given the uh, MVP of that game. Um, also, just I enjoyed going to a couple of different events. I went to a hockey game, saw the hockey team uh, beat Freehold Borough, which was nice, and I want to congratulate the Jackson Liberty girls, cheerleaders, on taking first place in their cheer competition as well. Um, if anybody's looking for a good night out, get on the calendar and look at some of the uh, sports and stuff going on in our schools. It's always fun to go out and support the kids and uh, see what they're doing. Thank you. So at the, uh, at the end of the year, I had the opportunity to attend quite a few of the chorus concerts that were going out throughout our school district. And I am looking forward to attending the upcoming chorus concerts. Um, I'm also looking forward to attending many of the upcoming um, productions that we have at our schools. And if you have the opportunity, you should come out because they really, these kids put in so much time and effort and they really are amazing to watch. So thank you for those uh, online watching and those of you that came out tonight. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Baraka. Ms. Rivera. Thank you all for attending the presentations, the input and comments, and everyone have a wonderful and safe evening. Ms. Gass. Um, I just want to thank the JEA as well for the coat drive. It sounds like it was a fabulous success. Um, we did donate, so it was, you know, had my son bring it. <laughs> um, but uh, I want to thank the high school speakers. I know they left already, but it's always a pleasure to hear them and hear the updates of what's going on in the school. And I agree with uh, Mrs. Brockus. We did go to the chorus concert, and we do have amazing programs and uh, things at the school and the sports and everything else. So I do encourage everyone um, to go out, and I do plan uh, to join you. Um, and also, please, again, we just cannot stress enough about this transportation bill. Please check our website out. Please, I urge you, um, you know, reach out to our legislator, legislators. This is very important for our township. Um, and I'd just like to thank everybody up here for everything that we do and wish everybody, um, all the speakers, it's always nice to hear the feedback and um, wish everybody a good night. Thank you.